Hey guys, Lucas Gravy here. Today, I just want to take some time to talk about something I find pretty interesting, that being originality in the arts. It's a bit of a contentious topic, especially in today's world, where the difference between a ripoff and an homage becomes more and more difficult to properly discern. I won't be discussing any legal terminology as what technically constitutes fair use. Rather, I want to talk about how the audience and the artist perceive something as original. What I find really interesting is how different art forms perceive originality. Some have a lot more wiggle room than others. For example, in something like hip hop, it's very common for artists to use samples of other audio tracks or even use the same beat as other rappers. Film is quite similar. No one bats an eye when a filmmaker recreates a particular shot from an older film, or even if they use a similar line of dialogue. In fact, I think people look at the homage with great reverence. They see a classic throwback, it adds a lot to their appreciation. Andrei Tarkovsky once said that he felt it was necessary to have classical paintings and music in his work, because he saw that film was in its infancy, and felt that the inclusion of older works would help give his film more roots. With something like literature, you could be absolutely crucified for plagiarizing someone else's work. Or in the art world, if you trace, you're seen as a complete fraud. I think the differences in the interpretation of what makes something original between these mediums comes from two things. Firstly, I think the old age of literature and paintings have made the medium slightly jaded. There's an insane plethora of ancient work. So many stories have been told and so many paintings have been painted. Because of this, I think the respective communities are hyper concerned with the modern works being totally original. Whereas with something like film, since it's so new comparatively, it's easier to take the older works and retell them in new interesting ways and with new technology. The technology behind literature and paintings hasn't really developed at all since its inception. The other reason is that film and music are more complex production wise. It's so multi-layered that it's far easier to add a sprinkle of this or a hint of that. It's easier to leave references and nods to other works. Whereas literature and paintings are more revealing upon the initial viewing, leading to any plagiarism or tracing being far more glaring. So film is more lenient with the homage than literature. But there's certainly still issues of originality in cinema, especially today where it's seemingly as unoriginal as ever. All the theaters seem full of remakes and reboots and reimaginings of older films, or adaptations of other mediums' best works, such as plays or books. So I guess the next question would be, is this truly a new development for film? And what does a lack of originality do to affect the form? It's certainly safe to say that remakes and adaptations are nothing new. So many great films, especially Western ones, are adaptations or are even based on true stories, such as Apocalypse Now, Godfather, Raging Bull, Schindler's List, Goodfellas, Ben-Hur, and just about every Stanley Kubrick movie. So if adaptation is nothing new and has led to some of the greatest films of all time being made, then maybe originality isn't needed. Perhaps not only is it not needed, but maybe filmmakers shouldn't strive to be original at all. Well, it depends what you mean by original. I think a more apt term would be authenticity, because the audience values the artist being true to themselves. And I think it's very self-evident when the artist is making a film for their own behest, and when they're making a film trying to impress people. So when a filmmaker sees a painting or reads a book that leaves them awed by the work, not only should they replicate or touch on what was made relevant to them in the work, they are obliged to do as such, because it is the obligation of the artist to state what they see in the world. And we live in a very odd time in which there's more art at our fingertips than life. Widespread appreciation of music has only been prevalent since the introduction of the radio. Before then, you could only hear select music by concert, which was a very rare commodity. Same goes for literature. Before the printing press, hardly anyone could read. And even if you could, it was extremely difficult acquiring certain text due to the limited release of them and translations being even more difficult than they are now. All this has completely gone out of the window over the last 100 years. With the introduction of the internet, we have access to just about every book, song, film, and painting ever released in the history of mankind. So much so that I could dedicate my entire life trying to discover and absorb it all, and I would hardly even scratch the surface. I'd probably have an easier time trying to visit every country in the world. So I think this increase of replication in the arts over the last hundred years is more so predicated by the fact that most people experience more profound moments of art than profound moments of life. Which I don't think this is necessarily good or bad, it's just different. 
This might sound somewhat silly, but you can see the extreme of this in memes, where everything is constantly being duplicated and redone. With each generation of the meme, it is slightly distorted and shifted into a new meme altogether. In the current era, we might very well be seeing the memification of art. So originality is complete nonsense and shouldn't be bothered with. No, definitely not. It's all about intention. There are many filmmakers that copy something, not due to respect or what they deem as the genius of it, rather because it is popular. Here's a great example. Joseph Campbell wrote the book The Hero with a Thousand Faces, in which he breaks down the archetypes of mythological stories and speculates as to the unifying structure of all myths. Cut to about 30 years later, and George Lucas was so deeply touched and impressed with the work that he decided to base his next film, Star Wars, of the outline of the myth in the book. As you all know, Star Wars went on to become one of the most successful films of all time. This is an authentic homage George Lucas made to the hero's journey and to myth in general. Now, where the homage turns to a ripoff is when subsequent filmmakers look at Star Wars and say, I want my film to be that successful, and then use the hero's journey outline for their film. Not for their own personal interest, but rather because the most popular film ever made used it, so it must be good. Instead of creating a navel from the real world to the metaphysical and metaphorical underlining of reality in which they feel boldly connected to, they simply decide to imitate. Instead of making a film, they make the appearance of a film. Instead of a book, just an imitation of a book. Basing their work off the techniques of the time instead of their intrinsic proclivity to the form. That's pretty much all I wanted to say about that. I'm interested to hear what you guys think down below. If you liked the video, give it a like. Click subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this one every week. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.